Very good afternoon, my dear students. Just confirm audio video is clear. <coughs> Kindly confirm audio video is clear to you or not. So very good afternoon everyone, myself Pratik Mishra and I welcome you all to the YouTube platform of IMS Gate Academy. We are conducting the foundation series of environmental engineering to make your basics strong so that you can deal highly conceptual questions asked from environmental engineering. Again, the purpose of creating this foundation series is to help you read con uh, complicated concepts in a very easy way. This foundation series will going to definitely help you in reading the complicated concepts of environmental engineering and apply them easily in the highly conceptual questions asked in gate examination. I hope you were following the previous sessions that we have conducted in this series. Today I came up with a very very interesting video that is regarding the trickling filter which is one of the biological treatment given to the wastewater. Okay, thank you Matan. So, Wastewater treatment is one such treatment in which we don't want to spend much money, right? And especially if I talk about the municipal sewage that we collect from the community, it contains mostly organic substances which can be removed through microorganism. We will going to apply some microorganism over this organic matter present in the sewage and will try to treat this sewage using these microorganisms. Today I will give you the flow chart of the wastewater treatment, then we will going to start with the trickling filter and we will going to discuss the basics of trickling filter. But before we start the session my dear students, there are few announcements. First announcement is, if you want to enjoy the daily quizzes, if you want to have regular job notification updates, if you want to enjoy our webinar and seminars which are conducted to make you aware about the different circumstances regarding gate 25. You can join our telegram group, the link is given in the description box. Next, we at IMS Gate Academy, we provide you with four different types of courses like online program, offline program, hybrid program and the self-learning program where we provide 800 hours of live teaching with interaction with doubt solving. We provide you with theory and exercise book which is a precise material to prepare for gate exam. Especially in our exercise book, there are more than 4,000 practice questions well versed in level 1, level 2 and level 3 so that even you can analyze what is your preparation level. We provide you with the exclusive gate question bank containing all the 34 years gate questions including 5 mark question, assertion reason questions, then match the following question and the other varieties of MCQ that were asked. We haven't left any single question in our gate question bank. It includes all the questions which are asked from last 34 years. In our gate question bank, we provide you the detailed solution, alternate solution, video solution with key points in chapter overview which actually helps in developing a concept. Again, I'll repeat this. Gate preparation is the development of concept that requires some time, that requires some serious practice and dedication. And it can only be achieved if you start practicing the concepts asked in gate examination because the concept will not going to change. It will be same. Questions may change, the data may change, but the concept is still the same. So when you are preparing for gate examination, start focusing on understanding the concept and applying these concepts properly. Next, my dear students, we at IMS Gate Academy, we personally take care of you and we provide 12 personalized one-to-one -one mentoring session. So keep your preparation oriented to have yourself a well-planned structure for your preparation journey. We meet every month in or every 20 days to plan your studies, to plan your practice, to plan your test so that you don't have this extra stress of planning all those things. We provide you with India's largest test series containing 130 plus test which includes chapter test, subject test, multiple subject test, advanced subject test and the full length mock test with the video solution. If you look into the overall package of practice that we are providing, we are providing you with more than 10,000 practice questions. Nobody else is doing this. If you are practicing this 10,000 question in one year, I am sure that you will definitely going to have the best of the rank in gate 25. 
and this is just for one set of practice. We even plan your multiple revisions or so just imagine multiply it with 10,000. That is the level of your preparation if you prepare with us at IMS Gate Academy. So these are our course features. By these announcements, I would like to start my today's session, which is on trickling filter. But my dear students, before reading about trickling filter, you should understand what is the problem that we want to solve. Why we are providing the trickling filter. So, we collected the wastewater from the community. Then we have analyzed this wastewater using wastewater quality parameters. Now, based on the existing quality of the wastewater and the cell purification capacity of the source, where we will going to dump this wastewater, treated wastewater, the degree of treatment is given to the wastewater. So, again, I am going to repeat myself. The degree of treatment given to the wastewater depends on two things. Degree of treatment. Degree of treatment given to wastewater or sewage. Degree of treatment of sewage or wastewater depends on two things. First one is the existing quality of the wastewater. What is the existing quality of wastewater? Existing quality of wastewater. By existing quality, again I mean that what is the amount of suspended solids present in the wastewater, how much amount of organic matter is present in the wastewater, how much amount of like microbes present in the wastewater. That defines the existing quality of the wastewater. And the self purification capacity of the source. Self purification capacity of the source. Self purification capacity of the source. Cell purification capacity of the source. So, these are the two factors on which the degree of treatment given to sewage depends upon. Existing quality of sewage and the cell purification capacity of the source. Now, this is again a separate discussion. How the cell purification capacity is defined? What are the different sources? So, basically we have three sources. Either you will going to dispose of this treated wastewater on the river or you will going to dispose this on lakes or you will going to dispose this wastewater on land. You directly apply it on land. So, different sources have different types of cell purification capacity that you read in the disposal of sewage. Okay. So, on these two factors, the degree of treatment given to the sewage depends upon. Now, my dear, when I am talking about the sewage, I am precisely talking about municipal sewage. In this treatment of sewage, I am specifically talking about municipal sewage. I am not talking about the industrial sewage. Municipal sewage. I am specifically talking about municipal sewage. Now, this municipal sewage for us has two types of impurities. First one is the suspended inorganic solids. Suspended, suspended inorganic solids. Suspended inorganic solids that we want to remove. This is the first impurity that we want to remove. Suspended inorganic solid. Second is the organic solid. We are worried about these two things only. We are not worried about the microorganisms. We are not worried about the color. We are not worried about anything else. Organic solid, sorry. Organic solids. Now, both are both types of organic solid, dissolved solids and suspended solids. So, basically, if I am talking about treating sewage, I want to remove two things. First one is the suspended solids and second one is the organic solids. Suspended inorganic solid and both type of organic solids, dissolved organic solids and suspended organic solids. So, different treatments are given for removing these solids. So, I think you know what are the two different impurities which are present? Suspended inorganic solids and organic solids. Dissolved organic solids and suspended organic solids. So, if you look into this impurities, I will write here. So, impurities present 
in your sewage impurities present in your sewage is <coughs> organic suspended solids organic suspended solids then you have organic dissolved solids organic dissolved solids and third one you have inorganic suspended solids these three impurities you need to remove okay so for removing these three impurities we are providing different treatment techniques now you see if i give you the flow chart of this entire municipal treatment of sewage then you will have the exact idea which treatment is removing which impurity you see this so this is the treatment of sewage and we do this like this so treatment of sewage and precisely i am talking about municipal sewage that is the sewage which is produced at your households municipal sewage so the first treatment unit that you have is termed as screening screening basically removes the coarse suspended solids so screening removes the coarse suspended solids coarse suspended solids any type of suspended solid whether it is organic or inorganic core suspended solids will be removed by screening then second is your grit chamber grit chamber removes your suspended solids or i should say inorganic suspended solids grit chamber removes inorganic suspended solids when you read this wastewater engineering in this flow it is easy to remember which unit is removing which thing so screening removes core suspended solids then you have grit chamber which removes inorganic suspended solids after that you have primary sedimentation tank primary sedimentation tank primary sedimentation tank which removes organic suspended solids primary sedimentation tank removes organic suspended solids primary sedimentation tank removes organic suspended solids now we are left with only dissolved organic solids that is removed in the biological treatment so biological treatment removes biological treatment which is also known as secondary treatment biological treatment which is also known as secondary treatment this removes dissolved organic solids or organic dissolved solids this removes organic dissolved solids this removes organic dissolved solids right so you can see here we have first listed down all the impurities which are present and then we have seen which unit is removing the which impurity right i haven't given you the detail flow of this treatment of sewage reason is it becomes too complicated to read that in one go so i have just simplified it in four different segments first one is screening which removes core suspended solids second is your grit chamber which removes inorganic suspended solids then you have primary sedimentation tank which removes organic suspended solids and then you have biological treatment or secondary treatment which is removing dissolved organic solids right now this biological treatment comprises of biological unit and a secondary sedimentation tank 
दिस बायोलॉजिकल ट्रीटमेंट और सेकेंडरी ट्रीटमेंट कंप्राइजेस ऑफ अ बायोलॉजिकल यूनिट एंड अ सेकेंडरी सेडिमेंटेशन टैंक सो दिस इंक्लूड्स बायोलॉजिकल यूनिट बायोलॉजिकल यूनिट एंड सेकेंडरी सेडिमेंटेशन टैंक so this is combinedly known as your secondary treatment both of them are combinedly known as your secondary treatment right now my dear there are different biological units out of which you can provide any one in treating your sewage based on your capability based on your design ability you can provide any one of the biological unit now let's see what are the different biological units we have which are responsible for removing dissolved organic solids right <clears throat> so different biological units can be listed like this so different biological units can be listed like this first one is your trickling filter first one is your trickling filter second one is your activated sludge process then third one is your rotatory biological contractor then you have upflow anaerobic sludge blanket reactor upflow anaerobic sludge blanket reactor then you have septic tank then you have emof tank and then you have oxidation pond so out of these seven seven biological treatment units you need to provide only one treatment unit in a sewage treatment plant right you need not to provide all of them just one most commonly used biological treatment unit is the septic tank that we provide at our households now see what is happening here in biological treatment we are removing dissolved organic solids how we are removing it we are simply applying microorganism over these dissolved organic solids and these microorganism will carry out the decomposition okay so biological treatment units or biological units biological units in biological units in biological units microorganism carry out the decomposition of i'll write in the next slide in biological units microorganisms carry out the decomposition of organic matter carry out the decomposition of organic matter carry out the decomposition of decomposition of organic matter 
carry out the decomposition of organic matter. And from this organic matter, what we mean? We mean dissolved organic solids. We mean dissolved organic solids. Okay, so this is what happening inside the biological treatment unit. Microorganisms are carrying out the decomposition of the organic matter and this organic matter is nothing but your dissolved organic solids. These microorganisms carry out the decomposition of organic matter to form biomass, to form biomass, to form biomass. Biomass is the decomposed organic matter, okay. I am dealing everything in very basic so that you don't have any confusion when we see the concept, okay. In the biological treatment unit, in simple words, microorganism carry out the decomposition of organic matter to form biomass. What is biomass? Biomass is the decomposed organic matter. Now these microorganisms which is carrying out the decomposition of organic matter, where they will go? They will stay over the biomass right they will stay over the biomass wherever these decomposed products are formed microorganism will stay over the biomass so whenever i need to tell about the number of microorganism in the system i will tell it through the concentration of biomass whenever i need to tell about the amount of microorganism in the system i will going to tell it through the concentration of biomass that is known as mixed liquor suspended solids or mixed liquor volatile suspended solids. So concentration of microorganism, concentration of, concentration of microorganism are reported in terms of biomass in terms of biomass that is MLSS or MLVSS MLSS or MLVSS mixed liquor suspended solids or mixed liquor volatile suspended solids so this is how I will going to report the concentration of biomass uh, microorganism more the amount of biomass obviously more will be the amount of microorganism that will be staying on the biomass okay now this is the story there is one more thing in this story that this decomposition which is happening of the organic matter this decomposition can happen either in the presence of oxygen or in the absence of oxygen if this decomposition of the organic matter happens in the presence of oxygen it is known as aerobic decomposition if it happens in the absence of oxygen, it is known as anaerobic decomposition. So based on the availability of oxygen, this decomposition can be of two types, either aerobic decomposition, it can be either aerobic decomposition, it can be either aerobic decomposition or it can be either anaerobic decomposition. It can be either aerobic decomposition or it can be either anaerobic decomposition. This is, this is the type of decomposition that can happen. Either it can be an aerobic decomposition or anaerobic decomposition, okay. So this is the overall scenario of all the biological units. So based on whether the decomposition in the biological unit is happening in the presence or the absence of oxygen, these biological units can be classified into two categories, either as aerobic systems or anaerobic system. If in a biological unit, the decomposition takes place in the presence of oxygen, it is classified as aerobic. If in a biological treatment unit, the decomposition takes place in the absence of oxygen, then it is classified as anaerobic. So looking into all these, right, trickling filter is a aerobic system. It is a aerobic system. Then you have activated sludge process. Again, it's a aerobic system. Then you have this rotatory biological contractor. Again, it's a aerobic system. 
then you have this upflow anaerobic sludge blanket reactor in the name itself it is anaerobic so this is anaerobic system then you have this septic tank which is an anaerobic system it is an underground system then you have emof tank again an anaerobic system and then you have oxidation pond which is an aerobic system you can expect a multiple select question right we will going to discuss one more thing and the combination of that will be a multiple select question for your examination now inside the biological treatment unit what is happening microorganism is carrying out the decomposition of organic matter either in the presence of oxygen or in the absence of oxygen and leads to the formation of biomass so if i need to show the amount of concentration of microorganism i'll show it through the concentration of biomass as simple as that now if inside the treatment unit you provide some surface where this biomass layer can get attached and microorganism have a proper seat to sit and then carry out the decomposition it is known as attached growth system you see this inside a treatment unit this is my treatment unit like this this is my biological treatment unit inside this biological treatment unit if i am providing a space like this a surface like this over which the biomass layer can get attached over this surface the biomass layer can get attached like this i am providing one surface over which the biomass layer can get attached like this right this is a biomass layer which is getting attached over the surface and here the microorganism can sit comfortably and can carry out the decomposition then this type of treatment unit is known as attached growth system so it is known as attached growth system so in attached growth system biomass layer will be sticking over the surface biomass layer will be sticking over the surface where these microorganism can sit comfortably and carry out the decomposition so this is known as your attached growth system but if your microorganisms are present in suspension in a biological unit like this if you have a biological treatment unit like this and the microorganisms are present in suspension like this these are how the microorganisms are present they are present in suspension like this okay and they don't have any seat to sit they are just in the suspension like this they are present in entire volume of the treatment unit and if the microorganism are present in the entire volume in suspension then this type of biological unit is known as suspended growth system this is known as suspended growth system this is known as suspended growth system right both these are biological units this is also the biomass in suspension and here the biomass is sitting on the surface bio means microorganisms microorganisms are sitting over the surface i am writing in very raw form right this is not an actual technical term actual technical term will be complicated to understand that's why i am just writing in very raw form that microorganisms are sitting over the surface over the surface then this type of biological unit is termed as attached growth system and if the microorganisms are present in suspension here the microorganisms are in suspension microorganisms are in suspension then it is known as the suspended growth system okay so based on this we have classified the different biological units into different categories so you can see here 
when i talk about an trickling filter it's a aerobic attached growth system it's a aerobic attached growth system it's a aerobic attached growth system then you have activated sludge process which is an aerobic suspended growth system it is aerobic suspended growth system then you have this rotatory biological contractor which is again an aerobic attached growth system attached growth system then you have this up flow anaerobic sludge blanket reactor which is an anaerobic suspended growth system it is anaerobic suspended growth system you have this is septic tank and emof tank both are anaerobic suspended growth system suspended growth system this is also anaerobic suspended growth system emof tank is also anaerobic suspended growth system and last one is the oxidation pond which is an anaerobic which is an aerobic attached growth sorry suspended growth system suspended growth system you can definitely expect a multiple select question from this slide so that's why this slide is so important right so whenever you are starting with this kind of question right <coughs> whenever you are starting with this treatment of sewage this kind of first analysis is important then only it will be definitely clear to you how any process works because all these biological units have different mechanism of working so one by one we will going to see today's session is about trickling filter we will going to see the entire mechanism of trickling filter how the sewage is treated using the trickling filter but first you can just note this down quickly this is a very very important slide that gives you an idea how different treatment units are working for the sewage treatment okay so this is the thing so if i just summarize this entire thing any biological unit can be either classified as an aerobic or anaerobic system based on the type of decomposition taking place whether it is taking place in the presence of oxygen or whether it is happening in the absence of oxygen similarly all these biological units can be either classified as attached growth system or suspended growth system based on whether you have provided the surface for microorganisms to sit or whether you have just applied the microorganism and they are present in suspension so this is the thing right chalo so we will be talking today about this treatment unit biological treatment unit which is trickling filter my dear most of the students are confused whether this trickling filter and the filter that we used in raw water treatment are same no different they are used for different purposes it has nothing to do we are talking about treatment of sewage treatment of raw water is separate treatment of sewage is separate trickling filter has nothing to do with the standard rate filter that we use in raw water treatment so in trickling filter how the thing goes how it happens we will going to see so please give the next heading trickling filters <coughs> so next topic of discussion is trickling filter now you see this how easy things are unnecessary it is complicated for no reason in trickling filter there will be one filter medium and that filter medium can be either made up of sand it can be made up of garnet it can be made up of geotextiles and many other material nowadays okay for our discussion we will keep the filter medium as sand okay so trickling filter is like this medium is made up of sand this is my trickling filter 
and in this trickling filter this is the sand medium that we have <coughs> this is the sand medium that we have this is my trickling filter and this is the sand medium that we have okay this is the sand medium that we have you understand the mechanism how the things are going this is the sand filter sand medium that we have this is my sand medium the particle size of the sand medium is comparatively more what we use as a filter medium in raw water treatment in raw water treatment we are also using the filter medium here the size of the sand particle is comparatively more of the filter medium that we use in raw water treatment so this sand particles is of larger size so this are the filter medium this is my filter medium now see what happens just see this this is the mechanism of trickling filter just see this so this is my filter medium this filter medium can be made up of sand this is my filter medium it can be made up of sand garnet geotextiles geotextiles charcoal or etc there are n number of medium nowadays right these are few important mediums that i have listed now what you do is you simply apply the waste water over this filter medium this is how you are applying the waste water over the filter medium like this this is how you are applying the waste water over the filter medium you apply the waste water over the filter medium like this this is how you apply right now what happens is you are applying it this waste water over the filter medium at very slow rate okay so when you apply this waste water over the filter medium slowly this waste water will going to trickle over the filter medium like this it will going to trickle over the filter medium like this it trickles over the filter medium it trickles over the filter medium like this it trickles over the filter medium like this this is how it trickles right trickles means moving slowly over the filter medium it trickles over the filter medium like this it trickles over the filter medium like this again what is trickling simply moving very slowly over the filter medium just like if you put one drop over the stone right say so this is my stone this is my stone and if you just put a drop over this stone what will happen is this drop will move very slowly over the stone like this it will going to cover all the surface of the stone and it moves very slowly along the surface of the stone and that is known as trickling of water <clears throat> so you just apply this waste water very slowly over the filter medium due to which this waste water trickles over the filter medium like this this waste water trickles over the filter medium like this right now when this waste water is trickling over the filter medium the biomass which is already present in the waste water will get attached over the surface of the filter medium when this waste water is trickling over the filter medium the biomass which is already present in the waste water gets attached over the surface of the filter medium and will form a layer which is known as the slime layer <coughs> so this is the thing oh i think this will be visible yeah so this is how this is how this biomass get attached over the filter medium and forms a layer which is known as the slime layer like this this is the slime layer this is the slime layer right this is the slime layer this is the layer of biomass that is present in the waste water already so when you just allow the waste water to trickle over the filter medium the biomass present in the waste water forms a layer over the filter medium which is known as the slime layer so this is the slime layer this is the slime layer this slime layer is of biomass 
this slime layer is of biomass right. So, this is my slime layer, this is my slime layer and this slime layer is of biomass, this slime layer is of biomass and I have told you this biomass layer will contain active microorganism, this biomass layer will contain active microorganism active microorganism it will contain active microorganism now see how the things are going you have just applied the waste water over the trickling filter this water will going to trickle over the filter medium and the biomass present in the waste water will get attached over the surface of the filter medium right and this biomass layer is known as the slime layer this slime layer contains active microorganism. So, initially when you start the process of trickling filter, you allow this formation of slime layer to take place. Formation of slime layer takes place in 2 to 3 weeks. So, initially when you start operating any trickling filter unit, initially 2 to 3 weeks, development of slime layer will take place, then only the treatment will start. So, I will write here. <coughs> Slime layer develops, slime layer develops in 2 to 3 weeks, slime layer develops in 2 to 3 weeks and for that time this treatment unit means this trickling filter will not be treating any waste water. Okay? Simply the slime layer will develop. Now see what happens. After 2 to 3 weeks when this slime layer is developed, now if you apply any waste water over this trickling filter, the active microorganism present in this slime layer will come in contact with the organic matter present in the waste water and will carry out the decomposition of this organic matter. So after development of slime layer, I write like this after development of slime layer after development of slime layer after development of the slime layer so this is my treatment unit this is my filter medium like this This is my filter medium which contains slime layer. So, this is my treatment unit containing slime layer. Now, again when you apply the waste water over this slime layer, the microorganism present in the waste water will come in contact with the organic matter present in your slime layer. Now, when you start applying the waste water over this slime layer, so again when you apply this waste water over the slime layer like this. Again the water will going to trickle over the slime layer like this, again the water trickles like this right, again the water trickles over the slime layer like this. Again it trickles like this. Now what happens is the microorganism present in the slime layer 
comes in contact with the organic matter present in the waste water and now these microorganisms will carry out the decomposition of this organic matter and this decomposed organic matter increases the thickness of this slime layer whatever biomass that is formed after the decomposition it starts getting attached over the slime layer and the thickness of the slime layer develops over the period of time so i'll write like this microorganisms microorganisms present in the slime layer present in the slime layer comes in contact comes in contact with the organic matter with the organic matter present in the waste water and carries out its decomposition and carries out its decomposition decomposed organic matter gets attached over the slime layer and increases its thickness decomposed organic matter decomposed organic matter gets attached over over the surface of slime layer and increases its thickness and increases its thickness so i think till now the mechanism of trickling filter is very clear to you initially when we start the operation what we do is we allow this waste water to trickle over the trickling filter for some time right say 2 3 weeks in these 2 3 weeks the biomass which is present in the waste water gets attached over the surface of the filter medium and forms the slime layer now this slime layer contains active microorganism so after 2 3 weeks when the slime layer is developed and now when you apply the waste water the organic matter present in the comes in contact with the microorganisms present in the slime layer and now these microorganism will carry out the decomposition of this organic matter and whatever biomass is formed that gets attached over the surface of this filter medium and increases the thickness of the slime layer now see what happens after this so you keep on applying the waste water the thickness of the slime layer keeps on increasing because more and more amount of biomass is formed and this biomass is getting attached over the surface of this slime layer increasing the thickness so here i will write down this is waste water and this is also waste water now you see what happens so now we will be talking about only one particle over which this slime layer is formed okay so initially this is the thickness of the slime layer initially this is the thickness of the slime layer right this is the thickness of the slime layer this is my filter medium surface
this is my filter medium surface and this is the initial thickness of my slime layer. When you keep on applying the waste water over this slime layer, the organic matter present in the waste water, when you keep on applying waste water over this slime layer, the organic matter present in the waste water comes in contact with the microorganism and these microorganisms carry out the decomposition leading to the formation of more amount of biomass and this biomass get attached over the surface of the slime layer like this. Now this is the biomass that is getting formed due to the decomposition that took place in this trickling filter. This is the new biomass layer. So this is how the thickness of slime layer goes on increasing, right? This is how the thickness of slime layer keeps on increasing like this. This is how the thickness of slime layer keeps on increasing. This is the increased thickness of the slime layer. Increased thickness of the slime layer. Now what happens here, after some time, this outer layer has sufficient availability of oxygen, okay. I will draw like this, this is the surface of filter medium, this is the surface of filter medium, this is the inner thickness of the slime layer, this is the inner thickness of the slime layer and this is the outer thickness of the slime layer. This is the outer thickness of the slime layer, right? Now this inner thickness of the, sorry, this outer thickness of the slime layer has sufficient availability of oxygen and food. This outer layer, outer slime layer or outer layer has sufficient availability of oxygen and food, has sufficient availability of of oxygen and food. So there is no problem with this outer layer, right? Here again aerobic decomposition is taking place because sufficient availability of oxygen is maintained. Now when you look into this inner slime layer, in this inner slime layer deficiency of oxygen starts taking place. And also, all the organic matter that is coming over the slime layer is available only to the outer surface. Means whatever organic matter which is coming by wastewater is only available to the microorganism which are present in the outer surface. The microorganism which are present in the inner surface starts feeling the scarcity of food and they also have the scarcity of oxygen. So the microorganisms which are present in this outer layer, they are happy, but the microorganisms which are present in this inner layer, they have a scarcity of food and oxygen. So this inner layer of inner slime layer has a scarcity of food and oxygen. This inner slime layer, inner slime layer has scarcity of food and oxygen has a scarcity of food and oxygen this inner slime layer so I'll write like this this is outer slime layer and this is your inner slime layer
Okay. So this is the thing. So when you look into this inner slime layer, it has both scarcity of food and oxygen. Now what happens is, when the microorganism does not have sufficient availability of food and oxygen, they start undergoing endogenous respiration. Okay. Whenever microorganism will going to have a scarcity of food, they will undergo endogenous respiration. And what is endogenous respiration? They start killing themselves. Okay. So, due to the scarcity of food and oxygen in this lower slime layer or inner slime layer, microorganism start undergoing endogenous respiration and they start killing themselves. Due to this endogenous respiration, the bond between this inner slime layer and this filter medium surface weakens, right. So, here due to scarcity of food and oxygen, microorganisms start undergoing endogenous respiration. Microorganisms start undergoing endogenous respiration. Microorganisms microorganisms undergoing endogenous respiration starts undergoing endogenous respiration and what is endogenous respiration microorganisms start killing themselves as the source of food they start eating themselves as the source of food right so the microorganism which are present in this inner slime layer they start undergoing endogenous respiration and due to this endogenous respiration the bond between slime layer and the filter medium weakens due to this endogenous respiration due to endogenous respiration i write here due to endogenous respiration in the lower slime layer due to endogenous respiration in the lower slime layer bond between slime layer bond between slime layer and filter medium and filter medium weakens filter medium weakens right the bond between slime layer and the filter medium weakens due to the endogenous respiration that is taking place in the lower slime layer or the inner slime layer. I have given you the entire detail how the things are happening right now. So, when this thickness have developed sufficient, okay, and this inner slime layer has started undergoing endogenous respiration, that what happens is the turbulence caused by this trickling water, right? This water when it will be trickling over the slime layer, the turbulence caused by this trickling water over the slime layer, the turbulence caused by this trickling water over the slime layer, the turbulence caused by this trickling water over the slime layer, it breaks the slime layer from the surface of the filter medium. The turbulence caused by this trickling water over the filter medium, it breaks this slime layer from the surface of the filter medium and that is known as slogging of the slime layer. So, this is my filter medium, right? This is my filter medium and this is the slime layer that has developed. This is the thickness of the slime layer that has developed, right? This is the thickness of the slime layer that has developed. Now, you see this. When this water will going to trickle over the surface of the filter medium like this. When it will going to trickle over the filter medium like this. Right. This is the trickling water. This 
द टर्बिलेंस कॉज्ड बाय ट्रिकरिंग वाटर ब्रेक्स ऑफ दिस स्लाइम लेयर ओवर द सरफेस ऑफ द फिल्टर मीडियम द टर्बिलेंस कॉज्ड बाय दिस ट्रिकलिंग वाटर ब्रेक्स ऑफ दिस स्लाइम लेयर ओवर द सरफेस ऑफ दिस फिल्टर मीडियम दिस इज माई फिल्टर मीडियम दिस इज माई फिल्टर मीडियम सो दिस स्लाइम लेयर विल गोइंग टू ब्रेक ऑफ फ्रॉम द सर्फेस ऑफ द फिल्टर मीडियम जस्ट सी दिस so now this is my filter medium surface and this is my slime layer this is my slime layer it breaks off from the surface of the filter medium like this right it breaks off from the surface of the filter medium like this so this is my surface of the filter medium in fact this is my filter medium and from the surface of the filter medium this slime layer will going to break off so this is breaking off slime layer breaking off of slime layer from the surface of the filter medium and this phenomena is known as slogging so this is known as <coughs> slogging so this is my slime layer and this phenomena is known as slogging of slime layer this phenomena is known as slogging right this slogging is responsible for removing more amount of organic matter using the trickling filter okay so this is the basic mechanism how the things goes for the trickling filter right so slogging will happen due to the turbulence caused by this trickling water over the slime layer more the turbulence caused more will be the slogging more will be the rate of removal from the trickling filter so slogging is caused by the turbulence caused by the trickling water the turbulence the turbulence caused by the trickling water by the trickling waste water breaks off breaks off the slime layer breaks off the slime layer from the filter medium surface or from the filter medium simple from the filter medium this is termed as slogging this is termed as slogging more the slogging more will be the rate of removal of organic matter from your trickling filter or more will be the rate of removal of organic matter from your waste water right so this is the entire mechanism of trickling filter we have discussed the basics of trickling filter how the treatment is taking place in the trickling filter after this you have the detailed analysis where you take up the discharge you take up the recirculation all those things you consider but for studying all those concepts you should know what is the mechanism that is taking place in the trickling filter which could be understood from here okay so i'll just give you two more note points first one is more the slogging more will be the rate of removal more slogging more slogging more will be the rate of removal more will be the rate of removal more will be the rate of removal from trickling filter from trickling filter
this is the first thing second thing the walls of the trickling filter are made up of honeycomb structures right means the sufficient availability of oxygen is maintained throughout the entire depth of the fil uh, filter medium that's why it is termed as an aerobic system so the walls are perforated walls the walls of trickling filter are perforated walls walls of trickling filter are perforated walls walls of trickling filter are perforated walls are perforated walls making sufficient availability of oxygen making sufficient availability of oxygen making sufficient availability of oxygen throughout the entire depth of filter medium throughout the entire depth of filter medium so these are the key points regarding the trickling filter right if you understand this much i think after this the analysis of trickling filter will be very very simple for you so in trickling filter first we allow the water to trickle over the filter medium so that the slime layer can develop in 2 to 3 weeks which is a biomass layer now after 2 3 weeks when the operation of trickling filter starts then the microorganism present in the slime layer carries out the decomposition of the organic matter present in the waste water and leads to the formation of new biomass which gets attached over the surface of the slime layer and increases the thickness of the slime layer when the thickness of the slime layer has increased a lot then the inner slime layer starts undergoing endogenous respiration the microorganisms present in the inner slime layer starts undergoing endogenous respiration which weakens the bond between the surface of the trickling filter and the slime layer now the water which is trickling over the surface of the filter medium it breaks off the slime layer which is uh, attached over the surface of filter medium this breaking off of slime layer is known as slogging more the amount of slogging takes place more will be the rate of removal from the trickling filter last point the wall of the trickling filter are the perforated walls which makes sufficient availability of oxygen throughout the entire depth of the filter medium so these are some of the basics regarding the trickling filter i hope you might have enjoyed this session okay so last announcement for you my dear students again i would like to remind you that if you want to get the lecture pdf youtube schedule if you want to enjoy the daily quizzes if you want to attend webinar or seminars that we regularly conduct again you can join our telegram group the link of all these things will be provided to you in the telegram group we also provide you with the any job notification update regarding the psu and the other government jobs in our telegram group next we at ims get academy we provide you with 800 hours of live teaching with interaction with doubt solving we have four types of courses online program offline program self learning program and the hybrid program we give you exercise in theory books containing 4000 plus practice questions well versed in level 1 level 2 and level 3 we give you the exclusive gate question bank containing 34 years of gate question in which we have provided the detailed solution alternate solution video solution along with key points and chapter overview we give you 12 personalized one to one mentoring sessions so keep your preparation oriented and focused and last we provide you with india's largest test series containing 130 plus test is starting from the chapter test subject test multiple subject test advanced subject test and the full length mock test with the video solution so by these words i wish you all the best and don't miss tomorrow sessions at the same time from 3 or 3:30 pm and that in that session we will going to talk about the activated sludge process which is again a very important topic in environmental engineering from where regularly questions are asked so thank you so much for listening patiently see you soon and see you at the same time at the same youtube platform thank you so much